Hey, how are you? Happy Friday. Let's talk about uh, eating with intent today. Uh, this came about because there is a popular talk, top popular topic going around. Um, it's intentional eating, and I have seen this everywhere on social media, in the media, and. To me, I have been wondering, what does that really mean? And, you know, to me, it really kind of means how do you eat? And especially in regards to how do you eat and what does that mean to your physical health and to your emotional health? So how do you eat? Um, do you eat in front of the TV or while scrolling on your phone or maybe in, on your at your desk in front of the computer, or while reading, um, or do you eat on the run, in the car, or in front of the refrigerator, or over the counter? I will tell you, I do and have done all of these. So if you have said yes to one or all of them or many of them, then I want you to know that you are so not alone. Um, but these, uh, ways, these styles of eating, these um, are unhealthy habits that could be playing roles um, in your physical health um, as well as in your emotional health. So let's talk about these different styles. And I hope you don't mind, I've taken some notes on these styles, so I might refer to my notes. It's just how I work best. Um, so the first style that we should talk about is food fretting. And that's when you are feeling overly concerned about what you're eating or having like this general negative mindset and relationship with food. Um, so if you're somebody who tends to spend a little bit more time regretting what you ate versus the time that you spend actually preparing your food. Um, I know I'm somebody who's gone back and forth having this kind of relationship with my food and then beating myself up over having that kind of relationship with my food. So what we want to try to do is we want to try to remove any kind of guilt or shame from our food. And the way we can do that is removing labels from our food. So labels like good versus bad. Um, and maybe instead um, turning it into, hey, this food is really helping me to feel my best. This food is really helping me to move through and feel the emotions that I have going on right now. The next style that we have is task snacking. So if you're always doing something else while you're eating, um, that can often lead to either overeating or even making not so great food choices. Um, so like eating in front of the TV or while scrolling on the phone or maybe reading. Um, I know I do all of these. Um, and even doing things like I do this one all the time where I will sit down for breakfast and I pull out my personal development book and I'm feeling like this is great. I'm really, I'm reading a really good book. This is so good for me. But really what happens when we are doing another task while we're eating is we're taking our mind off of our food and then we're not able to really taste our food and we're not able to feel then satisfied from our food, which can then lead to the overeating or making poor food choices. The next one is solo dining, and this is one that's going on a lot right now with our world. Um, but what can happen with solo dining is food can then often be filled to um, used to fill a social void. And I want to say this, there is nothing wrong with food being social and food being enjoyed. There's times when we use food to truly fuel ourselves for that um, purpose of fuel, and that's awesome. And there's times when we use food truly just purely for enjoyment in this social aspect, and that's just as awesome. Um, but what we don't want to get into the habit of is using food to 
fill a social void that we have. And most especially when we're alone eating, because that's when it's going to really start to lead to overeating and those poor food choices. So instead, what we can do is sit down with our food, make our environment nice. So sit down at the table, set a really nice table, make it pretty, make it how you like it, plate your food and really spend the time to enjoy the food that you're eating. The next style is an unappetizing atmosphere. So that would be like eating on the run in the car or eating in front of the refrigerator or eating over the counter or over the refri- or the um, sink, for example. I used to do this one all the time driving to work. I would grab like a bagel sandwich and I'd be shoving it in my mouth, getting on the highway like, oh my gosh, trying not to crash. And what happens when you're doing that is you are concentrating more on something else, the task at hand, than you or the atmosphere going on around you than you are on your food. You're worried more about the crash, which you should be, than you are worried about the food. And so again, that's gonna lead to overeating. That's gonna lead to unhealthy food choices, that's just going to lead to, again, your food not supporting your body physically, not supporting your mindset emotionally as well. Um, It's just going to go in and it's sometimes you feel it, right? It sits right there. You're like, or it sits in your gut like, oh, this does not feel right. So when we are doing that and we're in that unappetizing atmosphere, Frequently, it's become a habit. We want to try instead to become more present with our food, set those times to be more present with our food. The last one is sensory disregard. If you find that the habit is that every meal is more hectic, every meal is hectic, and there's a lot of overwhelm and chaos going on, that's again where our brains are just disconnecting from the food, from our meals, and um, we're not able to be present with our food. So just like all the others that we've been talking about. So really with these styles that I'm describing, I'm talking about we're eating without thinking. And instead what we wanna try to do is we wanna try to eliminate the distractions and eliminate, um, and I should say reduce these distractions as much as possible because real life happens, right? There's times where the house is going crazy and we got to get the kids to soccer and I don't have time to sit down and eat a really nice fancy meal right now, but I need to eat food and it's got to be quick and it's going to be over the counter. It's going to be over the sink okay, it's not about beating ourselves up over that, but it's about reducing that as much as possible to make it more of a habit to sit down and be more um, intentional with the time we're spending with our food. And the way we can do that too is just being more intentional and be mindful when we're preparing our food, just spending the time and enjoying the time we're preparing our food and enjoying the time plating our food, make it nice and pretty, and enjoying the time then when we sit down and eat our food so we can be more present while we are really consuming it. So we can love our food. Um, I hope that was super helpful for you. I'm actually putting together something really, really exciting. I cannot wait for it. Starting on February 14th, over in my wellness community on Facebook, we're gonna be doing a Love Your Gut Challenge. It's gonna be a seven day completely free challenge. We are gonna be learning all about healing our gut to heal our physical health and our emotional health in a way that works with everyday real life. So um, if you are interested in learning more about that, all you have to do is put a comment here on this video, send me a private message, um, and I will send you all of the information. When I upload this video, I will also put a link to that wellness community so you can come on over there and join that group. Starts on February 14th. I cannot wait to share it all with you. Alrighty, any questions about what we talked about today? You know, this is the kind of topic I think we can just go back and forth on and we can share knowledge with each other. We can help each other out. 
And so I would love to hear from you in the comments, your thoughts, how you are uh, feeling about this, how you implement eating more intentionally into your life. So share that below. All right, everybody have a really happy Friday. Talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye.